So could you imagine maybe in the coming years, everyone has the headset here yeah. to emigrate into the metaverse? Yeah. What should philosophy do, thinker do in that new era? Take the goggles off. Yeah, yeah. That's what philosophy should do. Take the goggles off. So, yes. So it would be the the mission of philosophy in、mm. a metaverse, if it、mm. ever came to、yeah. be, would be to try to、um, take or persuade people to take those goggles mm. Mm. off, to imagine a world、mm. in which the line. Between what's virtual and what's real, yeah, blur, yeah, blurs、mm. to the point of vanishing.、Mm. And here's the question:、mm. Would such a world be recognizable as a human world?、Yeah. A world in which we had lost, even where we no longer cared even to ask the question,、yeah. how to locate the line between the virtual and the real. And I think the deepest、uh, threat, in human terms, posed by the age of AI, is that we will confuse virtual community and connection、mm. with the real thing, and that would would represent、mm. a how, great loss. How to fight with the trend or deal with the trend? It's, it seems、right. unstoppable. You think it seems unstoppable? See, it seems, yeah.、I'm、And not sure why? Well, it's worth asking.、Mm. In figuring out how to stop it, it's worth asking why it seems unstoppable. Why do you think? Because too less, too less true debate, and、uh, I mean discussion about it. I, most people just follow the trend. Right. Yeah. yeah. But if, if I could、mm-hmm. feel and believe the connection I have through my phone, scrolling and swiping,、mm-hmm. and texting, and posting,、mm-hmm. that that connection to people half a world away is. The same as, as valuable as, my personal connections mm. Mm. to family, friends, neighbors, classmates. Yeah. What would you say to them? I don't know. <laughs> oh, why、yeah. would that represent a loss? I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm why so, would that represent yeah, a loss? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious about you because you know, yeah, my phone. Yeah. It's the most intimate things we have. We we touch、intimate. every. Yeah, very intimate.、Right. You spend more time with with it. Yeah, yeah. And the, even you through the, the the social media, you you talk with so many people. I think I think sometimes even most time, because from live different places. Yeah, we through it, but、yeah. still feel kind of very intimate. Yeah, the similar with me. Intimate. Yeah, Think, yeah, face to face. Right. So it's a new community. But I'm not so sure about. It's less important than the more concrete community before, or the similar. I'm so confused about well, it.、Yeah. So how to understand it? The change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.、Mm. Well, and let me ask you this question. Since <laughs> we're talking, <laughs> we're talking about intimacy.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Intimacy is an important yeah, yeah, aspect yeah. of this. Yeah. There are now AI-equipped devices,、mm. little robots. Mm. That you can buy. Let's say you have an aged parent or grandparent、mm. who's living alone,、mm. maybe in a nursing home,、yeah. and who's lonely. And you visit them from time to time, but you can't be there every day.、Mm. You can buy one of these、yeah. robotic companions,、mm. and the robotic companion will. Carry on a conversation、mm. with your loved one, your、yeah. grandmother, let's say, and let's suppose that your grandmother comes to regard that robotic, AI-driven companion、mm. as a friend, as an actual 
mm. friend, sharing intimacies, yeah. asking advice. Mm. And suppose that this relieves the loneliness mm. of your grandmother and makes her happier. She considers this her friend. Mm. Would that bother you or would you welcome that? Welcome. You would welcome uh, it? It doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't bother you at yeah. all? Maybe not at all, maybe a, a little, but I accept it. You would accept it? Yeah, but yeah. what's the little that bothers? Maybe just because the it's a new thing and needs some time and space to understand it, accept it. And but, but if you are grand, this goes back to the, what we were discussing about the <laughs> virtual and the actual and the yeah, real. Yeah. Now your grandmother no longer recognizes, we're assuming, mm -hmm. the difference mm -hmm. between a robotic friend and an actual friend. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bother you. Do you think there's a loss? I think the new friend, the toy, is friend of her. Because some books are for friends, even if it's just papers. <laughs> ah, books. Yeah. So if the grandmother or if you or I were absorbed in a book. Yeah, even if we see some old books, it's, it's like friends, yeah. It's, it's spent many, maybe childhood years with you. And, well, I agree that a book can be a friend mm -hmm. and a source of, I would say, genuine companionship. Mm -hmm. But does it matter that when I'm reading a book and absorbed in a book, I'm engaged in a kind of exchange with, a kind of dialogue with the human author mm. of that mm. book. Whereas when your grandmother is spending her day conversing with the robot, she isn't. We talk about Socrates, Plato, even it's, it's, it's 2,000 years ago. Yeah. Still can be your friend. Yeah. So, so why not the, the toy? <laughs> why not the toy? Yeah, why not? <laughs> mm. Because it's a machine. <laughs> yeah. Because, but, yeah. I, can it engage in dialogue? We've been uh, talking a lot about dialogue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can or put it this way, when, Take a simple example, when we... Maybe, maybe, maybe the toy to, uh, speak like Socrates. <laughs> so many information about Socrates. Right. Thoughts right. in the toy. Like yeah, a yeah. chat, chat bot. Yeah, chat, yeah. A Socratic chat bot. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. We, we can imagine Socrates <clears throat> from the books, from his dialogue. Yeah. From the, 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 the books. Yes. Maybe she can imagine something similar from the toy. Yes. The toy is like different books. Because the books is much more sophisticated than we think. Even a book is more different layers. Maybe we just can touch it, maybe several layer, layers, but more layers we still, still can't touch. Maybe. Maybe. Mm. maybe. If the toy has, it becomes a sophisticated chatbot that is programmed on Socrates or Dostoevsky. Right? Yeah. Well, let, let me ask you this. Mm. Suppose your grandmother passes away, mm -hmm. but she has left all of her digital data, all of her emails, all mm. of her social media yeah. recording of her experiences, and created a digital avatar mm using machine learning, mm. so that you, you're mourning the loss of your loved one, mm. but you can still carry on conversations with her, and so can your children, and so can their children, mm. with their great-great-grandmother, and ask her advice, can introduce her to a new boyfriend or girlfriend, ask her opinion. Mm. Now, 
in principle, machine learning, AI-generated chatbots, as they become perfected, could provide a kind of virtual immortality, mm. in which case the line that's being blurred is not mm, yeah. only between the virtual and the actual, but yeah, between no. l living and, and, yeah. <laughs> and not living. What mm. about that? Would you want to speak to the virtual digital avatar of mm, your great-grandmother? Maybe I, 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 maybe I will, I guess. I would. Because, you would. You, 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 because in those days we see pictures of them. Yeah, their letters, photo. Read yeah. their letters yeah. and remember them. Yeah, it's it's still kind of dialogue with the photo, with with, it, with the letters. Yeah, yeah. it but is a kind of dialogue. Yeah, it's become a new, <laughs> complicated, and a more rich photo and letters. Yeah. So he, he, the, the so virtual immortality. You would welcome virtual immortality. I'm not, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. I I think I will. It's like maybe in the still the about books, the bookshelf. Yeah. Around your room, you yeah. can see different names. Yeah. Maybe the AI, the robot, the virtual reality. Maybe it's, it's kind of new thing of the like books. It's grandma, grand grandparents, yeah, friends. But in that case, would you no longer, would we no longer grieve or feel sad when someone dies, a loved one dies? Sure, we have. But, but why? But if we can continue to know them and speak to them and be with them, then why should we even grieve their passing? But, but I think we still can see the, the very thin line of the different, different part. The, the, the still line, The I thin guess. line. Yeah, I, I think, I think. I don't know, I think. And if, and if we no longer could even find the line, would that be better? Or worse? No, I don't think so. It wouldn't be better? Mm, I don't think so. Because? If, if, if we human being can't feel lost, maybe part of us will disappear. Uh, yeah. 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 But someone, some new part will emerge. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. But loss, mm. loss is an interesting aspect of humanity. The, yeah. Your intuition that loss is somehow essential. To being human. Yeah, define, you're defined by, by loss, yes, yeah, yeah. By loss, mm. which is connected mm. to memory. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is another way of describing what would be lost if the line between the virtual and the real were all together mm. uh, blurred. Mm. Well, So what can we do? So, what's your, what's your choice? The, se the same question, what's your choice? I think there would be a loss. Will you ac accept it? I mean... But would I go to speak to the virtual avatar of yeah. my grandmother? Maybe as a curiosity to see how the machine worked, mm -hmm. but not um, thinking that this was being in the presence mm. of my grandmother. Mm. In fact, the idea of human presence and why it matters mm. is one of the most important questions posed by new technologies mm -hmm. and AI. Mm. It's another way of asking the questions we've been discussing just now. What is there about human presence that matters? Mm. I th I've thought about this in connection with teaching because, as you know, we did an experiment some years ago and filmed and put the justice class, 
online. Yeah. And we did it as an experiment. We did it to show that higher education should be a public resource, not just a private privilege. We had no idea what would come of it. We certainly didn't imagine that tens of millions of people would want to, would want to watch it, which is what happened, that to, to watch lectures about philosophy. But it did raise the question then about what am I doing here in Sanders Theater at Harvard? Mm. If people can watch online, is there a difference between uh, attending a, a class or a discussion or a dialogue virtually mm. online and in person? And now it may depend on the subject. Some of my colleagues have made attendance at their lectures optional if they have video recorded ones. They say, well, you can watch it and get the content. You can learn the information from the lecture. Mm. Sitting at home in your pajamas in bed, mm. as well as sitting in the classroom. I don't see it that way, at least for my subject. Mm. Because being here, yeah. sitting here and listening and engaging and wondering and puzzling and laughing and responding, I see that as something that is very difficult to replicate yeah, agree. Yeah. digitally. And yet, I'm interested in doing more and more experiments to see if we can create platforms mm. for public discourse and dialogue, including global public discourse. Mm -hmm. I think we should explore that, in part because if we don't do it deliberately, then this entire technological apparatus and social media will simply be what we have today, which is a uh, highly polarizing, mind-numbing, commercially driven uh, form of communication that takes us further and further away from a healthy civic life. So I want to do experiments mm. to, um, to create platforms for global discussion mm. uh, using the internet, using new technologies. Mm. But I don't think it will ever be possible fully to replace the human presence that learning at its best and dialogue at its best requires. Mm -hmm. But do you think that's just a traditional old-fashioned view, maybe? I agree, I agree. I totally oh, you agree, agree with that? But, yeah, yeah. but it's paradox, because you mentioned in, in a classroom, in a theater. Yeah. You, you mentioned that in one interview said, a, a, in Beijing, a taxi driver to, told you yeah. he watched your <laughs> video. He told a colleague about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you know, you know maybe for the Beijing taxi driver, for that moment, even very long distance yeah. from here. But he feel so intimate with your point of view. Yes. Maybe more than the student here. Maybe. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Well, this was a thrilling, when I heard this story, yeah. that a, a Beijing taxi driver had been watching mm -hmm. my lectures on justice. And, and he said his family was watching with him. Mm -hmm. This for me, this single story, was a reward, uh, the, one of the greatest yeah, yeah. rewards I've experienced yeah. since we did this project. And so I think it's important to use technology mm. to open access mm. and to promote discussion and learning mm. and mutual learning and to, uh, to try to go further mm. to create d back and forth dialogue, not just diffusing mm. material, but enabling people to discuss across great distances. And yet, if that were all there was to human connection, then I think we would lose something. Mm -hmm. I think we yeah. would lose something. In fact, I would go further. Mm -hmm. I think part of what makes watching mm -hmm. justice online compelling for that taxi driver in Beijing or anyone else, mm. is that what they are watching 
is not just me standing giving a lecture. No, no. They are watching it. actual engagement yeah. in person. And that's part of what makes it compelling. Yeah, I you're think. right. You're quite right. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're quite right. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Uh. <laughs> Even though it holds about a thousand people, mm -hmm. it feels intimate. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah Because yeah. Mm. it's banked, and people can who are speaking mm -hmm. can see one another, mm. and it feels intimate. It feels like a seminar mm -hmm. almost. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. Ah. What kind of role the intimacy played in the thinking? I mean, in the. In the debating, I mean, how important it is. It's very important mm -hmm. because it allows for dialogue. Mm -hmm. What the intimacy creates is a sense of community and gradually mm -hmm. building trust, mm -hmm. where people can disagree with one another, but still with civility and mutual respect, yes. and learn together. That's mm -hmm. really the idea: mm -hmm. to learn together. I'll put a question mm. to students, mm. and it's a kind of journey mm. together. But there's no guarantee mm. that the student who raises her hand mm. or his hand will offer the argument or the yeah. idea yeah. that I'm expecting. Sometimes the unexpected can lead in very interesting directions. Other times, less sometimes so. like chaos. Well, yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes chaos. You so, emerge. So, which part is most difficult? I mean, it's a journey. Journey. Sometimes journey is boring. Sometimes journey is very exciting. Sometimes yeah. dangerous. Yes. Well, the most dangerous. That's uh -huh. the easier part to uh -huh. answer. The most dangerous moments, mm. but in some ways, the most important moments are the ones where. The questions we're discussing come closest mm. to the personal feelings and convictions of students, and those are the dangerous moments. But they can also be the most revealing and clarifying moments.、Mm. What I try to do when I teach is、mm. to bring philosophy down to earth to show students. Mm. How they have a stake in what famous philosophers of the past have written. Philosophy does not only reside in the heavens, far beyond the <laughs> world in which we live.、Mm. It it inhabits the city. It informs our everyday life. Okay. See you next time. Okay. Okay. All the best. All the best. Okay. Thank you so much. See you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Hey, you know, 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 你昨天不是刚说过不练了吗？就专注自己的事儿吗？就今天可能就练英文也是自己的事
突然在舞台上，我变成那个被他追问的人。那一刻，你突然意识到，当你被追问的时候，才是你的思考真正打开的时候。你会被迫调动起你所有的感受，去回答他的问题。而且是那种更精确式的询问，你不可逃避式的询问，因为我觉得我总是经常在拐弯抹角的逃避一些事情。我们刚做这个十三幺节目的时候，陈佳映老师七八年前跟我说，他希望我去读读哲学书，我一直就没好好读过。这次在哈佛，我真正产生出想去好好读读哲学书的冲动。那现在我也觉得桑德尔在埋各种各样的种子，这些种子也肯定在某一个时刻破土而出的了。你总需要创造自己的时间。独自观察山茶花的绽放，在古老的剧场，追问功利与正义的问题，与时代喧嚣的缝隙，重又捕捉内心的敏感。你追寻往昔，却看到了未来。沉静之下。激情场意外涌动，哇！在通往世界的途中，自我反而日渐清晰。人生恰如一段丰富的旅程，过万境，见心境。